I'm going to do a video on what angle of a projectile maximizes its range. So this is often a question asked of first year physics students, what angle maximizes the range? And a lot of times the introductory student says 45 degrees. So what they're thinking about is if a projectile is shot with a certain initial velocity and an angle that 45 degrees gives you the maximum range, and that is true if the projectile comes back to the same height that it began. Okay, but if the projectile, uh, let's say you shoot it from the top of a table or from the top of a cliff, okay, if the projectile gives you maximum range for 45 degrees, look what's going to happen. The projectile is going to be coming down, down, down like this. It's going to be angled down. Now, if you shoot it at, let's say, 40 degrees, 40 degrees is going to go like this. It's not going to go as far by the time it comes here, right? This is, this is 40 degrees now. So it is true that 45 gives you maximum range if it's the same height. But look what's going to happen with the 40 degree. It's likely to go more, uh, less steeper, cross the 45 degree, and hit here. So it's, uh, we predict, therefore, that an angle less than 45 is going to give you maximum range. Uh, it goes like this, it goes like this. Now it might start coming back lower. So it goes like this, like that, you see. So there's a particular angle depending on what your initial velocity is and what your um, height is. You could also make a similar argument like this. If your projectile is shot from the ground onto a cliff, you want it to have the maximum range. Okay, 45 degrees, let's say, looks like this. Maximum range, right? This, let's say this is 45. This time I predict that the maximum range will be more than 45. So let's say something like 55. 55. It should go up, go up, go up, go up, go up. Go like this. Okay, let's make it a little better here. Go like this. So the 55 should perhaps give you a larger range. You see here the difference of the two. If you're shooting it up to some height, but then if you allowed it to come back down, the 45 wins, of course. Okay. So let's uh, prove uh, what the ma angle for maximum range is for this situation or that situation, and then we'll. We'll uh, give some random numbers here. So let's let's do this one first. Let's say you're shooting um, at 10 meters per second at an angle theta, and then this is four meters. Okay. So what is the angle for maximum range? So what is the equations of projectile motion? So what we could do is we are, of course, here assuming that air friction is, we could ignore air friction, it's ignorable. So x equals to v initial cosine theta t, y final equals y initial plus the initial sine theta t minus 4.9 t squared. We're using it in the matrix system with uh, g being 9.8. Then I'm going to take the t put it into that t, y final is going to be 0, y initial is going to be 4 meters, so y initial is 4, v initial sine theta, t is going to equal x over v initial cosine theta minus 4.9 uh, x and then the x squared over v initial squared cosine squared theta, okay? And then what happens here is the v initial, v initial cancels. Now, I could also here multiply everything by v initial squared cosine squared theta, okay? So that I don't have any denominator, okay? So uh, take everything, put it on this side. 
So we're going to have 4.9 x squared. <clears throat> that one comes over here. And then this one comes over here. Minus, it was x sine theta divided by cosine theta. But I'm multiplying everything by b initial squared. Cosine squared theta. And then this one comes over here. It's negative 4. And that's equal to 0. Oh, the 4 is also got to be multiplied by the initial squared. V initial squared cosine squared theta equals 0. And then here what happens, cosine theta, cosine theta cancels. I can call x my range r. Okay, that's my range. Now I can also put my velocity, my velocity is 10. Okay, so put 10 here and 10 here, and what do you get? 4.9 r squared minus r, this is the x, and then you have cosine times sine. We're going to use a bunch of trig identities here. Uh, so one of them is going to be the sine double angle formula. Sine 2 alpha is 2 sine alpha cosine alpha. So sine alpha cosine alpha, sine alpha cosine alpha is sine 2 alpha over 2. So uh, we have here uh, v initial uh, squared is 10 squared is 100. Sine alpha, uh, sine theta, cosine theta is sine of 2 theta divided by 2 minus 100 times 4 is 400 cosine squared theta. So my final answer in simplified form I get here 4.9 r squared minus 50 sine 2 theta r minus 400 cosine squared theta equals 0. So what angle maximizes the range? Well, I need to now solve for r as a function of theta using the quadratic uh, equation. Then take the derivative of that equation. Okay? So Remember the quadratic formula, negative b plus minus square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. So my b is this thing here, negative 50. So negative of that, so you get 50 sine 2 theta plus minus, but I don't want the minus option. So I don't want the negative range. So r is, as a function of theta is equal to, then square root of b squared, which is 2,500 sine squared 2 theta minus 4 times A, which is 4.9, times C, which is negative 400 cosine squared. So let's erase this, some of this here. divided by 2a, which is 9.8. And uh, the negative and the negative uh, becomes a plus. So the most simplified I could get that uh, is about, well, we could keep it like that. So that gives you r as a function of theta. So if you tell me what angle you're shooting at, this will give me the range. So now I want to maximize the range. So take the derivative of the r with respect to theta. So when you're taking the derivative, I don't care about the 9.8 because I'm going to set the derivative equal to 0 eventually. So 9.8 is just a constant. So the derivative of 50 is going to be uh, 50 cosine 2 theta times 2 plus we have to use the chain rule here. You're taking a square root of a function. So you first have to take the, the, the derivative of the square root. So that's going to be half times 2,500 sine squared to theta plus, <clears throat> and when you do that, you get, um, let's calculate this here, 4 times 4.9. 
times 400, 7840. And then that's cosine squared theta, and that's to the negative half power, right? Because the derivative of a square root is equal to half times u to the negative half times du dx, if you're taking the derivative with respect to x. So then we're going to take the derivative of the inside. 